Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on estimate roots. As we zoom in to our real-world link, legend states that while sitting in his garden one day, Sir Isaac Newton was struck on the head by an apple. Suppose the apple was 25 feet above his head. Use the following steps to find how long it took the apple to fall. So what is the square root of 25? Well, 5. The formula t equals the square root of h can be used to find the time in seconds it will take an object to fall from a certain height h in feet. How long did it take the apple to fall? Well, the square root of h is the height, so the square root of 25 we just found is 5, and so the time is going to equal 5 over 4, as the square root of 25 again was the 5, which is equal to 1 and 25 hundredths as a decimal seconds. Suppose another apple was 13 feet above the ground. Use the formula to write an equation representing the time it would have taken for the apple to hit the ground. Well, time would equal the square root of the height, 13, over 4. Can you write the square root of 13 over 4 without a radical sign? Explain. Well, right now, our answer is going to be no. And the reason the square root of 13 is not a perfect square. But good news. In this lesson today, we're going to figure out a way to estimate this so we just don't stop and go, oh, guess I can't do it. So let's continue on. Estimate square and cube roots. You know the square root of 8 is not a whole number because 8 is not a perfect square. The number line below shows that the square root of 8 is between 2 and 3. I mean, when you think about it, 2 squared is 4, so the square root of 4 is 2. 3 squared is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So the square root of 8 is going to fall somewhere between 2 and 3. Now, since 8 is closer to 9 than 4, the best whole number estimate for the square root of 8 is 3. In our guided examples, estimate the square root of 83 to the nearest integer. Well, think about the perfect squares around 83. You have 81, which is 9, and the square root of 100 is 10. And sometimes a number line can be helpful here as we have 9 and 10, where 9 is the square root of 81 and 10 is the square root of 100. Where does the square root of 83 fall in? Well, a lot closer to the 9. So if we're using a nearest integer estimate, that's going to be 9. Now, cube roots, we can use the same process. Estimate the cube root of 320 to the nearest integer. Well, this, again, requires some cube roots, and 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. 7 times 7 times 7 is 343. And so as we look through there, let's look to compare. The cube root of 216 was 6. The cube root of 343 was 7. 320 is closer to 343, and so our nearest whole number estimate, or our nearest integer estimate, is going to be 7. Now, we have a slew of problems to try on our own, so let's go and try them. When we look at A, the square root of 35. Well, think, what perfect squares are around 35? Well, I know that 5 squared equals 25. And we know that 6 squared equals 36. So, if we are looking at the number line, we have 5, and we have 6, and 5 is the square root of 25, and 6 is the square root of 36, and so where does the square root of 35 fall in? Well, I would think somewhere right around here. And so if we're looking for the closest whole number estimate, or closest integer estimate, that is, that's going to be simply 6. What if we go on to B? 
the square root of 170. Well, 12 squared is 144. 13 squared is 169. Now, I don't have it quite yet because now 14 squared is equal to 196. And so, again, I think our number line can be very useful because we have 13, which is the square root of 169, and we have 14, which is the square root of 196. And where does the square root of 170 fall? Well, a lot closer to the square root of 169 than the square root of 196. So what is our nearest integer answer? 13. Moving on to C. The square root of 44 and 8 tenths. All right. Well, 5 squared is 25. That's too small. 6 squared is 36. That's still smaller. 7 squared is 49. So it looks like it's going to be somewhere between 6 and 7. And if we look at a number line now, we can plot 6 here, 7 here. Now, the square root of 36 was 6. The square root of 49 was 7. And 44 and 8 tenths, well, that's a little closer to 49. So 44 and 8 tenths is closer to 49 than it is 36. And so our answer is going to be 7. Now let's look at our cube roots. As we slide back to D, the cube root of 62. Now our cube roots are challenging, but if you wanted to create a list of all the cube roots for yourself as you go through this assignment, that might be helpful because I know that 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. And for now, I'll stop right there. If we look at the cube root of 62, what two numbers are, is that going to be between? Well, it looks like 27 and 64, or 3 cubed and 4 cubed. So we can still draw our same number line here. We can put our 3 and our 4. Now, the cubed root of 27 was 3, and the cubed root of 64 was 4. Where's the cubed root of 62 fall in? Well, I would think a lot closer to the 4 than the 3. So our answer is 4. What about E, the cubed root of 25? Well, we just said that 2 cubed was 8, and 3 cubed was 27. And so, for the cube root of 25, we're going to be between 2 and 3, as the cubed root of 8 was 3, and the cubed root of 27 was 3. Sorry, the cube root of 8 was 2, cube root of 27 is 3. Get that straight there. Now, the cube root of 25 is going to fall somewhere right here, closer to the cube root of 27 than the cube root of 8. So our answer here is going to be 3 as we continue on to f. Well, 5 cubed is 125. 6 cubed is 6 times 6 times 6, which is 216. And so 129 falls between those two. And as we draw our number line, we'll have 5 and 6, with the cube root of 125 being 5, and the cube root of 216 being 6, and 129 and 6 tenths, well, that's going to fall probably a lot closer to our 5 than our 6. And so our answer is going to be 5. So to recap all of our answers, A was 6, B was 13, C was 7, 
D was 4, E was 3, and F was 5. Now if we look at the next guided example, Wyatt wants to fence in a square portion of the yard to make a play area for his new puppy. The area covered is 2 square meters. How much fencing should he buy? Well, we're looking at perimeter. And so he needs 4 times the square root of 2 meters of fencing. The square root of 2 is between 1 and 2. So 4 times the square root of 2 is going to be between 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So it's going to be somewhere between 4 and 8. Now, is this the best approximation? It says you can truncate the decimal expansion of the square root of 2 to find better approximations. So estimate the square root of 2 by truncating or dropping the digits after the first decimal place, then after the second decimal place, and so on, until an appropriate approximation is reached. So we use a calculator to get the square root of 2 being 1.4142135622. But if we start truncating, you will notice then, truncate or drop the digits after the first decimal place. The square root of 2 is going to be between 1.4 and 1.5. Because 1.4 is the low end, 1.5 would be the high end. Well, if you took that four sides times the 1.4, that's where the 5.6 comes from. If you take the four sides times the 1.5, that's where the 6 comes from. So we're estimating now that saying, okay, it's going to be somewhere between 5 and 6 tenths and 6. Now, if you want to get even closer, what you can do is truncate after the 1.41. 1. And so you're going to say, okay, it's in between 1.41 and 1.42. And if you take the 4 times 1.41, that's where you get the 5.64. The 4 times 1.42 gets you the 5.68. And so we have then approximately 5 .6, between 5 and 64 hundredths and 5 and 68 hundredths. Mm. And so the approximations indicate that Wyatt should buy 6 meters of fencing. Kelly needs to put trim around a circular tablecloth with a diameter of 36 inches. Use the equation C equals pi times diameter to find three sets of approximations for the amount of trim she will need. Truncate the value of pi to the ones, tenths, and hundredths place. Then determine how much trim she should buy. All righty then. Well, pi is going to be equal to 3.14159 and so on. So if we're looking at the ones first, we're going to truncate this just to 3 and 4. So if c equals pi times diameter, what we can do is say, all right, c, instead of pi, we're going to use 3 times the diameter 36 to get 108, and then I can estimate the 4 times the 36 to get 144 inches. And so when I estimate to the 1s, it's between 108 and 144. What about to the tenths? So to the tenths, 3 0.1 is our low estimate, and then 3.2 would be our high. So we can take C equals 3.1 times the 36, and C equals 3.2 times the 36. Our first answer is 111 and 6 tenths, and our second answer is 115 and 2 tenths. So we have a lot of different estimates here, and we need to make one more, and that's to the hundredths place. So as we scroll over here for our hundredths, we'll have 3.14 and 3.15. So circumference is going to be 3.14 times 36, or circumference is going to be 3.15 times 36. The first one, 113 and 4 hundredths, and the second one, 113 and 40 hundredths. And these are all inches.
So as we look to determine how much she needs to buy, well, this was still a wide range in our tenths from 111 to 115, but we kind of narrowed it down with our hundredths. We're somewhere around the 113 range, but we want to make sure she buys enough, and so we're going to round up to 114 inches for our answer. Our last guided example deals with the golden rectangle. The golden rectangle is found frequently in the nautilus shell. The length of the longer side divided by the length of the shorter side is equal to 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Estimate the value. Well, first we'll estimate the value of the square root of 5. And as we do that, we get it to be 2. And again, if we just looked at our quick number line here, we look at 2 and 3. 2 is equal to the square root of 4. 3 is equal to the square root of 9, and what's closer? Well, the square root of 5 is closer to 2, which is how they came up with the 2. And so they put in 1 plus 2, which is 3, over 2 is 1 and a half. And that is it for this lesson on estimate roots. Good luck.